Hello everybody, James Martin here from QSIS and I'd like to introduce you to the latest version of QSIS Designer 9.5. Now as you'd expect, this includes a whole lot of different hardware and software enhancements. Part of that is some new products. So in 9.5 you have the new NLSB42 loudspeaker which connects directly to your QLAN network and this complements the existing NLP4 and NLC4 loudspeakers. Now one addition that you have on the NLSB42 is you have an RGB LED strip on the front and we've made it really easy to synchronize this with LED strips on the TSC G3 and on the upcoming NMT1 microphone with a new feature called Call Sync which allows you to synchronize all of these lights without any complex control programming. Now in addition on the product front we have the new QIO IR1 IR transmitter and receiver and we have the QIO S4, which is going to allow you to easily add serial ports to your QSIS design as well. But on the software side, let's talk a little bit about video. So we have some enhancements to MediaCast in 9.5, which is, of course, the video protocol that allows you to route video from the NC QSIS cameras to USB bridges. This can now be routed directly to the HDMI output on an NV32. Let's take a look at how that works. A feature that we've been working on for quite some time and is finally here is the ability to route video from QSIS cameras to the HDMI outputs on an NV32. This can be done on an NV32 set to decoder mode as you'd expect, but it can also be done to an NV32 set as an encoder or an NV in core mode. All of these modes can decode camera video and send it to HDMI output 1. Now, it's extremely easy to set this up. Every NV HDMI I.O. component now has a MediaCast input pin in addition to the AV or HDMI input pins. And if you go to the source selection, you can see there that you've got MediaCast in as an option. Here you can see it on the decoder as well. But please bear in mind that this can only be done to HDMI output 1. So HDMI output 2 will not be able to decode these camera streams. In this example, as we've taken the MediaCast pin from our MediaCast router, the NV will actually follow the cameras that are currently being sent to the USB bridges and will send that to the HDMI outputs as well. There are some important additions to control in 9.5 as well. One of these is a new feature which allows you to add custom Lua modules to any QSIS designer file, which is going to allow you to easily reuse code that you use quite often. I've been using this for a little while and it works really, really well. We've also made changes to the way named components work and added a script programmer mode to QSIS Designer. Let's take a look. One of the new features in QSIS Designer is the ability to add custom Lua modules. Now for a little while we've had the ability to use the JSON module or the XML module for example, but now you can add your own by writing Lua scripts and adding them to this folder on your PC. If you go to QSC, QSIS Designer Modules, you can then add a folder which contains a Lua file plus a JSON file to describe your module and then this can be imported into QSIS Designer. Now this works very similarly to the way we currently import CSS styles. So let's take a look at Designer and see how this works. Now I'm going to head into the tools menu and this is where we would previously find manage UCI styles but this has now been replaced with design resources. Now this includes styles and they work in exactly the same way as before but alongside those we now have the modules that we've added to our folder. Now I'm going to select the helpers module and install that into my design file and designer will keep this in sync with the file on your PC if you do change it. I can select it here and I can see the Lua functions that are contained within. Now if I go into my control script, one of the functions I've added to this helpers module is the ability to print the contents of a table. Now normally I was adding this to every single script because I was using it all the time, but here I can just type helpers.tableprint and I will be able to run that function in any of the Lua scripts in this design. The new version of QSIS Designer features a very important change to the way named components work. Now named components have long been a very important part of script programming in QSIS and also external control protocol and QSIS remote control where third party control systems can talk to QSIS. Now here we have a plugin, the Automatic Camera Preset Recall plugin, which uses named components, but you can see that in 9.5, even though we've named our camera, we can't see it as a selectable option in this plugin. 
Now, that is because in 9.5, we've separated the labeling of components to their code name. Now, every component has a label property and a separate code name property. This means you can give components a simple name just for organizational reasons, but you can give it a code name which scripts and third-party control systems can use to control that component. On this camera component, I can change the level of access given by that code name. So before it was kind of all or nothing, you either gave external control and all scripts access, but now we can change it to all, external control, none or script. I'm going to change it to all in this case. Lastly, if I want to change QSys Designer to show the code name for every component rather than the label, I can go to Tools and select Script Programmer Mode, and now I can see the level of access that every component has, and I can see its code name rather than its label. And it's very easy to switch between Label Mode and Script Programmer Mode. One important audio feature I want you all to be aware of is that when you're using software-based Dante on the Core 1 10F, previously it was limited to eight Dante flows in and eight Dante flows out when using it in 32 channel mode. We've now managed to increase that limit and now it does 16 flows in, 16 flows out in that mode, which matches the Core Nano, the Core 8 Flex, the Core 510 when you're using those products with software-based Dante. Of course, 9.5 has a whole lot of other features and improvements that I don't have time to talk about right here. So please do check out the release notes, do download the software, and I'm sure I'll see you again at the next one. Thank you very much.